All right, guys and gals, it's been quite some time since I've uh, put out a video. Um, been uh, kind of busy doing uh, some things around here at the house and out on the road. Uh, this video is actually going to be on the accident that I had two months ago. Um, not at fault. And uh, I want to put this video out there to try to help somebody out uh, that is dealing with the same kind of situation. I know I'm not the only one, and I won't be the only one dealing with this because of the people that are out here. Um, so just to bring everybody up to speed, two months ago, I was in a vehicle accident, a uh, car crash uh, with a, um, an employee driver of a uh, used car dealership, small used car dealership, um, and he was in a company vehicle. Sorry about the lighting. It was windy earlier today when I was trying to do this video before, so I'm going to try to stay in the light for you. Uh, but anyway, um, I was in the accident with him, and he uh, he ended up getting cited, failure to maintain control of the vehicle. He was cited, you know, for that. He couldn't give the officer any kind of information about the crash, why we were there at or on the site. Um, the man wouldn't take any pictures whatsoever of the of the crash uh, and um, he ended up he ended up going to court and fighting um, two weeks so that we had about two weeks from the time of the crash till he went to court for the first time so within that two weeks I contacted uh, the company that he worked for their insurance company I contacted them and they didn't start a claim because they had to talk to the owner first, which was fine, whatever, I understand. So after they had spoke with the owner, they denied the claim, starting a claim until after I personally spoke with the owner of the company, of the dealership. And to be quite honest with you guys, you guys can do that, try to settle out of court, whatever, or settle without a, without a claim if you want. To me, that's not smart, but, um, you know, I was just like, well, okay, if I need to talk to this guy, I'll entertain that idea. You know, I'm, I'm kind of witty, so we'll just see what he has to say. So I played along. I called him. Uh, I had spoke to him, and he was trying to do a little investigation, you know, trying to see if two stories, you know, one from his employee and my story on what happened actually jived with one another. And they didn't. Uh, totally opposite stories. Um, I spoke to him. I told him, I said, look, I said, I told your guy to take pictures. He didn't take any kind of pictures whatsoever. And, you know, it just is what it is. Um, at first, he was like, oh, yeah, I can fix that truck, no problem. You know, you send me a picture of it. I can send, or I can fix the truck, no problem. It's, it'll probably only cost me 500 bucks whatever. And I told him, buddy, I've got estimates of $3,100 um, worth of damage. And it doesn't look like much, but, you know, front bumper's a thousand bucks. Um, yeah, I could probably get one, you know, a China made bumper cheap and, you know, not, you know, not to the quality of what was actually manufacturally put on the truck. But, you know, that's besides the point. Um, you know, this truck is a Centurion. It's not just some Joe Schmo truck that's, you know, a million of them was made. Uh, Centurion uh, is out of, uh, out of business, and uh, these trucks no longer uh, exist. Um, you know, this front balance here, the white part on the bottom of the, on the, bottom of the bumper, it's busted uh, beyond repair, and I'll never find one. You know, it'd be like a needle in a haystack finding that. Uh, I'm, they're just not out there. So... You know, that's where I'm at. Anyway, so I dealt with him, and he decided after he heard that $3,100 is, you know, what my estimate was, he decided, well, it's not their fault. They're not going to take responsibility. But okay, whatever. Waited for the guy to go to court. He went to court. Uh, he pled not guilty. At that time, I was subpoenaed. The officer uh, that was on site, he was subpoenaed, and uh, the sun's going down. I can actually take my glasses off now. He was subpoenaed. We both showed up. Um, you know, 
I had pictures uh, of the crash, the whole nine yards, and um, the, uh, you know, I spoke with the prosecuting attorney, and before I knew it, before didn't even get to talk to the judge. Before I knew it, he was up there pleading no contest. So it's kind of like, you know, done with court, whatever. That was a kind of a wasted day, but, you know, you have to go if you're subpoenaed. So... Call his insurance company again, get things, you know, try to get things started. And, you know, basically no contest is you're pleading, you know, I'm guilty, but I'm not saying I'm guilty. So what they ended up doing was I called his insurance company again, and they said that they're not accepting re responsibility, that the owner of the company is not accepting responsibility for uh, their crash, you know, at they didn't feel that they were responsible for it. So at that point, you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place on what to do. And a lot of people uh, at this point will get very mad. Uh, you'll feel helpless and you'll think that you need to get a lawyer involved at this point. If you wanted any outcome from this, is it worth the hassle, you know, to fix my truck? you know, and to go through all this, whatever. Those are the things that will go through your head. Keep your head up. Don't don't let them defeat you. I've always been the guy that bullies the bully. Always. All my whole life. Um, that's, that's just, I'm the nicest guy to the world. Uh, give the shirt off my back to anybody uh, if I felt that they needed it. But once I see someone talking down or, or walking on somebody, I'm going after that guy. So this guy started walking down on me is the way I felt. So, the, you know, I gave it a day, I thought about it, stewed it in my head, you know, just figuring out what I could do. So, the first thing you need to do when you are in this accident and you know everybody is okay, start taking pictures, start taking videos. Don't move your vehicle unless you absolutely have to. And be, if you can, before you move, via, move your vehicle, take pictures of where it's at. Front, back, side, everything. Take pictures where his vehicle at is, located to your vehicle. Make sure you get pictures of, of skid marks, road signs, whatever. That is the main important piece. No one's going to look after you except for you. You need to build a case toward the other guy just in case something happens like in my situation so that's what i did i snapped pictures i took video the whole nine yards asked the guy if he was going to you know this is an older gentleman he was 70 years old uh 70 or 71. i asked him i said hey i said you want to take pictures before i move my truck or whatever nope nope i don't need no pictures whatever I said, okay you know you're going to accept fault whatever so um did that so now that that evidence that I took um, I had it with me when I went to uh, or when I was subpoenaed to court I showed the prosecuting attorney my pictures I got big blowed up pictures you know from my cell phone at uh, Walmart uh, local Walmart they'll print them up for you uh, it's well worth the 20 bucks is what I ended up call, you know, costing me to get some pictures made up. Um, if there are any witnesses, uh, you know, any witnesses whatsoever, try to get some, you know, try to get some names, some numbers, whatever. Uh, and, and, and that's going to help you also. If they don't have to stick around, just try to get that information from them. Uh, you know, everybody in this day and age is busy and they don't want to stick around. They just want to, you know, hey, you okay? Okay, see you later and take off. Um, but nobody wants to stick around anymore and do the right thing and, uh, you know, help someone out. One guy did for me. Um, I didn't approach him. He approached me, handed me a business card and said, look, I saw it happen. If you need me for some reason, this is my information. You just give me a call and I'll help you out. Cool. All right, appreciate it. So now, his insurance won't take care of my stuff at this point. Okay, we've done been to court. Um, you know, he pled no contest. 
his insurance won't take care of my stuff and you feel like you're between a rock and a hard place, what am I going to do? Um, at this point, a lot of people will say, well, I need an attorney, you know, and, you know, he's just going to get screwed over um, in my eyes. You know, they're going to take they're going to take part of the part of the, you know, the settlement to fix your truck to pay them. Um, or you'll end up paying a little out of pocket, you know what I mean, just to get the settlement money to take care of your vehicle. Um, but here is what I done, and it actually worked. I didn't know if it would work, and I tried it, and it worked. Like I said, this is two months ago when this all happened. I called my insurance company, and it, it, this just settled out, like, today. Um, so... I called my insurance company and I talked to them. I said, hey, I said, this is what I want to do. Uh, I had a conference call between five other, you know, five other individuals together that deal with my insurance company. And uh, I talked to them. I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to open up a claim uh, for this accident. Um, I'm not at fault. His insurance is not accepting responsibility. But... I don't want you, as in my insurance, to pay for my vehicle to be repaired. It's cosmetic damage. I'm still able to use my vehicle. You know, we're okay there. It's not horrible. Um, you know, I'll be okay. And uh, I said, this is what I want. I said, I want, I want a claim number from his insurance company, and I want his insurance company to accept fault and take care of my vehicle you know, pay out to take care of my vehicle, you know, for the crash. And at that point, they, you know, they were like, well, absolutely. You know, it's basically my insurance company is being my lawyer at that point. So they're like, absolutely, we can do that. If that's what you want, we can do that. And if, you know, for some reason it doesn't work out, we'll just, you know, go, go a different route with it. It's like, okay, I told them I had pictures, witness, skid mark pictures, pictures of where I was, the whole nine yards. I had it. Now I'm going to send it to them. So I sent it, I sent it all over to them. They looked at it and said, absolutely, we'll take care of this. You are definitely not at fault. Um, it wasn't a couple days. Uh, they ended up, uh, or actually it was longer than a couple days. It, it was probably two weeks is about what I waited. Finally got a um, claim number and uh, once I got the claim number, they accepted, you know, that automatically says that, you know, his insurance is taking care of my vehicle uh, with an ongoing investigation at that point. Um, his insurance, of course, they have to get a statement from their insured, uh, you know, on what happened that day, you know, what actually happened with the accident. So they took my statement. And again, my statement did not draw, jive with his statement. Totally opposite. So, and he had no pictures. He had no witness. Nothing. So all this plays and trumps his story. Okay, I have people and pictures and, and I've got a beautiful story, a big beautiful story here that, that tells everything that I'm saying between pictures and a witness. He has nothing. So, I ended up telling him that. And I offered the pictures at this time when I first spoke with their insurance company. I offered the pictures. So, this would have been approximately two weeks ago. I offered them all this information. Didn't want the pictures, none of that. You know, it was just basically taking a statement and that's that. Okay, so last Tuesday, I get a phone call, and it's from the insurance agent on his side. So I spoke with uh, his insurance agent, and his insurance agent was like, look, we're not going to be able to, you know, accept responsibility, blah, blah, blah. You know, they're both conflicting stories, and, um, you know, you have no eyewitness, so we're not accepting responsibility. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, did my insurance company send you any pictures? Nope. I said, did they send you a witness? Nope. 
I said, I even offered pictures and my witness to you last week when I spoke to you, and you didn't want it. And he was like, well, uh, 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 I, I, I don't recall that. I said, yeah, go back and listen to the tape. You'll hear it. And, uh, you know, because it's all recorded, every bit of it. How he even tells me that, you know, everything, you know, when I've spoke with him every time this, this is being recorded, whatever, fine. Um, have nothing to hide. So he's like, yeah, send it to me. You know, I, I can determine whether, you know, we're at fault or not or we need to accept liability. So that's perfect. So I sent him all the information. I sent him uh, all the pictures. I sent him pictures of the skid marks, the, you know, marked out the skid marks and sent him a duplicate picture with the marked skid marks, you know, and told him like, look, this is, this is what this is. This is what this is. You know, here's my witness, his business card. This is my witness, blah, blah, blah. So today, today is Monday. Um, I just got a text from his insurer or his insured stating that they accepted responsibility they are going to pay out checks in the mail whatever along with their estimate and it's real close to what i ended up getting we're talking a hundred dollar difference maybe and i'm fine with it you know bygones can be bygones you know they offered he's like if you need a rental while your vehicle's getting fixed you know let me know we'll help you know we'll make sure you have a rental so that's what happened with me. So steps that you need to take. Once you're in the accident, you know everybody's okay, and especially you, as long as you're all right and able to, willing and able to get out of the vehicle and snap some pictures safely, do so. Take pictures, take video, build a story. Build, build you know, tell the story with your photos. Um, that's one. Any witnesses? Make sure you get a copy, you know, of their name, number, you know, something from them, a way to get in contact with them to help you out if you need it. Uh, the other thing is if their insurance company does not take responsibility, okay, this is going to happen. It will happen. It may not happen to you, but it's going to happen to the other guy that's watching this video. If that happens and you are not at fault, and you have proof that you are not at fault, don't hire a lawyer yet, okay? They're just gonna take money from you. They're gonna take, they're, that's what they're gonna do. You know, they're out here to take money from you. Uh, lawyers are great if you need them, but at this point, you still don't need a lawyer. Contact your insurance company and talk to them. If you're able to drive your vehicle, or if you have a second vehicle that you're able to drive while you, you know, said vehicle is down that was in the crash. This is what you can do. Be patient. Call your insurance company. You know, say, hey, this is what I want to do. I want to open a claim. I have pictures, photos, video, whatever. Witnesses, witness statement, whatever. Um, I want to open a claim on this accident. And this is what I want you to do is to take your knowledge to call them to call his insurance and get me a claim number and get it started. I'll send you all my information, what I have for the crash. That way you can investigate it yourself and look it over and just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. That's what you do. Uh, you know, I believe every insurance company would be like, well, hell yeah, we're going to help you out, you know, keeps us from paying out. So that will, you know, that will make them work for you. So there's your free lawyering between insurance companies. Um, that'll, that'll benefit you. After that, if you run into a problem where they still don't want to take care of your vehicle at that point, make sure that they have, you know, said other person that hit you or caused the accident, whatever. Make sure that they have, uh, that insurance company has all the pictures that you supplied to your insurance company uh, all the information that you supplied to your insurance company involving the accident is called, you know, as far as pictures, video, witness statements, witness name and number, so they can call and investigate it themselves, and just to see if 
your story jives with everybody else's and what you're showing them. Um, at that point, they should accept responsibility and get a hold of you and start taking care of you at that point. So you just got to remember that your insurance company works for you, just like his insurance company is working for him. Therefore, they're not going to believe me because I'm not insured through them. They're going to believe the guy that is giving them money every month uh, for insurance and keep him from, you know, having a claim if they can do it. It's just, just the way it works. So, you know, make sure you get the pictures, take all the video that you can, skid marks, road signs, whatever, landscape, whatever you can do. Um, that's the most important thing that you can do after you know everybody is okay, especially you, and do so if it is able to be done so safely. Do not move your vehicle until afterwards, even if you have to move your vehicle. Make sure you get the photos, video, and that stuff first, okay? So this video is getting kind of long talking about this. I really hope it helps somebody out. A um, little bit of an update on a couple things. I've got the truck up here to the garage. I'm getting ready to swap out a U-joint on it. I got a bad U-joint on the truck. Uh, my John Deere tractor, I ended up getting it all put back together. It is working great. Uh, and I actually have a gator. The gator is actually in the garage. Uh, and we are going to do a review on the gator versus the ranger. So that's coming up also probably within the next couple videos. But uh, I'll get back into making some videos. And, uh, you know, we'll just keep going with it. So, guys, I appreciate it. Like, subscribe, hit the bell. Uh, drop some comments, ask some questions on this you know, situation, and I will try my best to help you out uh, if I can. So uh, any knowledge that I have, I am more than willing to help somebody out, and that's why I do these videos. So like I said, this was over the accident. Um, you know, we'll take care of that and move along. So you know, just move on with life. I am not taking my truck anywhere to get fixed. To me, it's a hassle. On dealing with a, um, a rental and stuff like that so what I'll end up doing is I'll get the parts in and you know if I can find this front balance here the white piece on the bottom of the truck if I can find that as far as a paintable one we'll get it ordered I'll paint it in the garage have everything ready to go and maybe just change it out on a Saturday or a Sunday and uh, you know just move on with life that is a lot less headache to me than dealing with a rental in the line of work that I do. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.